This is a compilation of reviews that we have already done. Right now, I am insanely sick and can barely talk whatsoever. So, I hope you guys enjoy this. And next week, we will be back with more MMO news and maybe some more reviews. Hope you enjoy. Lost Ark is an action packed, high fantasy, free to play MMO set in a medieval steampunk environment with many unique features. In today's video, we are going to be rating this game based off of replayability, fun, graphics, community, and accessibility on a scale of 1 through 5. One of the very first things that you will notice when you load up the game is not only the ear piercing audio, the cool animations, but also the server select screen once you've chosen the server that you would like to play on you're going to be taken to a character creation screen here you can select between warrior mage martial artist male or female gunner male or female or assassin each of these classes also has unique subclasses to go along with them and i do recommend doing your own research on to figure out which one you like the most honestly it looks like there's a lot of classes that have expanded since the last time i played the game but let's be honest place i'm playing warrior i play warrior in every game we gotta play warrior in this game it's the rules i don't make them I just play by them. After choosing the class that you would like to play, you'll be taken to a screen where you can customize your character with features you, that you desire and make him look however you like and take the name that you like as well. Keep in mind, names are only one use per person in the game per server, and that's just how it is. It sucks, yeah, I know, but that is exactly how it is. And then, once done with the character creation, you can launch the game where you can immediately be brought into a tutorial that allows you to test the subclasses and skills helping you choose the perfect ones and then this is also your time to decide if you really want to play that class or if you just want to play something different Dude. keep in mind i'm not the best at this game since it's been a while boom big damage big damage nice Boom, boom, boom! Accident. I don't understand why the game just doesn't start us at level 1. Like, what's the point of starting us out at level 10? Alright, we killed it. Okay. I do like the bosses in this game. A lot of the bosses are just, like, really big. Arnold can stay there and die. Easy. Imagine it like ruins the game for everybody else. Because Arnold didn't get saved. When first coming into Lost Ark, leveling feels very fast paced and fun. The game quickly pulls you in, making you want to explore all the little details, gather items, and complete all the quests, especially as cutscenes immerse you deeper and deeper into the content. Not only that, but the combat itself makes you want to keep fighting every single enemy you can and do all the little events, especially with all the little completion awards that you are able to get while leveling. Another thing that helps with this leveling experience is these very small dungeons that the game has seemed to put together that allows the players to experience miniature boss fights very early on in the game. Okay. The the big swirls? No, no, stop it, Ugo. I love how in this game you don't have to face your target. You're dead! You're dead! I got him. I leveled up. But it quickly goes downhill from there, as you find the fastest way to progress is to do everything on each map and some quests don't even unlock in areas until you finish other quests in those areas, making it quickly become a running back and forth simulator instead of a MMO with the occasional boss fight, cutscene, or dungeons, forcing the players to feel as if the leveling is very tedious, even though it's fairly quick, taking around 6 to 12 hours to get to soft cap. This feeling would continue as you leave the first continent and start to explore others until you hit max level. Exploration is one of the best things in the entire game of Lost Ark. As soon as I was done leveling, I decided that I was going to explore the entire world, gain a lot of items, and go and see what else is in the world besides what I have seen so far. There's tons of content to do and tons of collectibles to gather in the open world, including mounts, songs, achievements, pets, maps, furniture, coins, and even books to help later on when you are trying to mid-max, obviously, making you want to explore each and every different island for all their unique events and all their unique collectibles that you can gather, as well as experiencing their unique vibe for each 
every island, making exploring one of the most fun things in this entire game, and actually one of the only things that I want to continue doing. Honestly, I believe that every single person would enjoy exploring in this game, and if you do want to explore, you should go do it yourself and really experience it, so that way I'm not spoiling anything and you can really have the most fun. You guys look so badass, man. Look at the king! Imagine if we could get the armor! Dude, I love this map. The wind force? Oh my god, dude. That. God, it's just, it's so much more fun than the regular horse. To the island we go! This is one of my favorite islands in the entire game. Talk to this guy. And you can turn it in and get books. Once you have hit soft cap, you notice that you have to start progressing your gear score. In order to progress your gear score at the fastest rate possible, you want to be doing all of your dailies and your weeklies, which include your gathering, your boss raids, your wave dungeons, your events, your regular dungeons, and your raids as well. Now, a big thing that you can do with these dailies and these weeklies is you can log in a few hours per day on a schedule, and you can usually end up getting most of them done. A few of the dungeons and a few of the raids obviously will take you more than a few hours, but in general, you should be able to get all of these done and crank them out. So that way, you can progress at the fastest rate possible to make your way all the way to end game and really catch up. All of this together sounds very simple, right? As you just do what you would normally do in a MMO. You would just go through, do your dailies, do your weeklies, really get everything done, and obviously you would be able to progress. But it quickly goes downhill from there as we see that there becomes pay to win that people are allowed to progress faster than you can by simply going to the market, spending $20, and they've already done what you would have gotten in an entire week done. Quickly making this normal MMO experience into a pay to win experience. And now we do know that there is a lot of MMOs that are pay to win these days, but I don't really think that is an excuse to automatically put pay to win into your game and make it where that is the number one way to get up. Especially as we look at pay to win and in the pay to win brackets, we can not only see that you can buy gold so you can get higher tier gear, but on top of that, you can buy skins. You can also buy the gems that you need to upgrade your armor. You can buy upgrade stones. And that is just the start of it. Also, a good thing with this class is, dude, my health just fluctuates so much. Like, yeah, you don't really don't have to do anything. Big damage. I'm gonna save my, my AoE for the next area. I've never done one of these by myself before. Besides, like, the first one I ever did. And then after that, I figured out that it was easier to do it with people, so I stopped doing it that way. Oi! Stop it! I want loot! Wait, that gave me so much gold! What, what was that? That's me new, right? We did it! Wait. Why do we have the rest of the pathway then? I'm glad we got it done. <laughs> Why do we have the rest of the pathway? Looking for pure luck. I think I did the wrong one. I think we were supposed to... Yeah, we're supposed to do this one. I clicked on this one. <laughs> uh, that, that's my bad. But, so you can do more, but anything past that, and you're just kind of gambling. What is this? Okay. I talk shit. But this skin is badass. That's a nice skin, boys. Right? And the regular store is very pay to win. All this over here is your pay to win items like every single one of these so you can buy these these are to upgrade your gear and to just like smash out your gear like honestly you can probably put like 200 dollars in the game and probably almost become max level if you're really lucky now we go gear hone as you see here we have a 100 percent chance to get the next level and these are things that add percentages so you can use these and add 1.5% chance to the chance to upgrade. 
And where this comes in is going into the very, very like high tier gear, like getting to the absolute end game. As an overall, the end game is very grindy and does take a little while to catch up to the players that have been playing it since release. But that is nothing that we have never seen in a MMO before, as it always takes time to catch up, whether it's level boost or gear boost or anything of that sort, you will always have to grind for that in-game content. I believe though that the in-game content in this game is fun enough to the point where you can log in a few hours a day and grind out and really catch up within a good time period as long as you use your time wisely. Making it to where if you can get past the initial pay to win that some players are going to do no matter what, then you will have a lot of fun in this game. Lost Ark has many pros about the game, including immersiveness as the game pulls you in and makes you want to play for hours and hours on end as you continuously get more and more loot. The good graphics that look very nice, very aesthetically pleasing and make you not want to just get off the game after an hour because of how bad it hurts your eyes. The combat, it's not overall as good as action combat in other games, but it feels very flowy and it feels like all of the things work together very well. The animations, as it feels like all of them fit every single thing in the game, it does really feel like they're lacking in any way shape or form and of course the exploration as it makes you want to explore the entire world to get all of the items that are the collectibles or just things that make you upgrade your character but there is pros there must be cons as well the leveling as it seems very quick to level between 6 and 12 hours depending on how much you know about the game but at the same time feels so tedious because you have to do every single thing in the game in order to level up the progression because it's going to take a long time to grind you're gonna have to put a lot of effort in to really catch up to the people that have been playing the game for a long period of time at this point the bots they consistently over flood the market and make it really hard to get things in the game they over flood the gold they over flood the gems they over flood the resources and it just makes everything more expensive and much harder to do the only thing that the bots really help with is the occasional boss fight and of course the pay to win as nobody in the u.s really likes pay to win in the games some people do some people don't but i think the vast majority of people will say that they do not want pay to win in their game because it makes their achievements feel less valuable lost ark is overall a very good game there's many things to grind for many things to collect many things that will immerse you into the game and make you want to keep playing it including the combat and the story itself the game is very fun, it does have replayability, the graphics are really nice, and overall the accessibility is really really good. The only issue that I have with the game currently is the community, as the community doesn't really appreciate each other whatsoever, which kinda sucks when it comes to a MMO. So overall, I would give this game a 4 out of 5. New World is a action-packed high fantasy MMO set on a medieval island with PvP, dungeons, crafting, and more. In today's video, I'll be rating this game based on how fun it is, how much replayability it has, how well the game looks, how easy the game is to get into for new players, and how friendly the community is. When first loading up the game, you're immediately met with ear piercing audio and an area where you can select your preferred server. But this is also the first area you can make a mistake on as a lot of servers are dead or dying. So if you don't pick a high pop server, the chances of success significantly drop. I think I'm just going to make two different characters, honestly. I think we're going to make one on a high pop server and probably one on a low pop server. We already have our character up here, but I'm thinking we should probably make one on a low pop so that way I can give you guys the best experience possible. New World's character creation is interesting as there's no classes to choose from, instead you load immediately into a cutscene followed up by a very little character customization which is kind of weird for a newer game. Uh, that guy looks sick. This character customization is kind of bad, I'm not gonna lie. Hmm. Ain't a fucking Q, are you serious? After creating your character, it's immediately followed up by another cutscene where then it's going to decide where it wants to drop you in one of the two starting zones. Yes, that is correct. There is two starting zones and one of the starting zones is better as it technically has more loot and has more things to choose right off the bat, making it where your build can be very unique very early on if you get that zone. But if you get the other zone, then it's not going to be as unique, which just doesn't make sense. Just make them equal so that way I have freedom at the beginning of the game.
When first being dropped into the game, it feels really fun and addicting as you get drawn into the game through the combat, the leveling, and exploring, making you want to play for hours and hours on end. It truly feels as if the leveling was really thought out in the beginning because you level very quickly from questing and crafting, allowing the players to go from 1 to 30 within a few hours, and then 30 to 60 within 4 to 6 hours after that. We gotta hunt these boar. Come here, Mr. Boar. Come here, Mr. Boar. I have found you. Spin. Oh, get him. Get him. Beat his ass. Yeah, that's right, boy. You better run. Loot! 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 Get away from me. Get away from me. I already killed all your brothers. We leveled up again? Holy crap, brother. This is level up simulator at this point. The leveling isn't all good, though. Yes, it is very fast paced and fairly easy, but once you get around 40, it seems to get tedious as they start making the quest across the map from the turn in points, making the game become a running back and forth simulator where you go to a town, grab four or five quests, then run all the way across the map to a zone to complete those quests on repeat. Why is it that every single quest is across the map in this game? Like, I just got to this area, and I have a lot of quests. Like, that's what it looks like, right? But I picked these quests up all the way down here. How am I all the way up here? It doesn't make sense. Like, I understand they don't obviously need mounts if you have everywhere on the entire map to teleport to. But honestly, for a new player, that's extremely overwhelming. Imagine having 50 quests that you can't do because they're so overleveled that you have to wait to do all of them. The combat is one of the funnest parts in the entire game as it feels very free-flowing, making the players feel as if they have more control over the combat than they really do, thus making the game feel very immersive and fun whether you're a new or old player coming into the game. I want to show you guys a few different weapon combinations. So this is my personal favorite. This is for tanking. So you have the sword and board, slash slash, you know, you can do shield bash, jump on some people, this, and then if you switch bars, you can have a massive hammer. It just does really big damage. You can just do a bunch of AoEs that basically apply debuffs and help your team out. And that's probably one of my favorites. Another one of my favorites to use is the assassin build with sword and spear. It's actually pretty good. So you basically have a giant sword that does a bunch of damage. So overall, this is pretty nice. Uh, my spear isn't upgraded at all, but you know, you poke people with it, you do bleeds. And it's just a really fun build. So I think it's pretty cool to do. The final one that I'm gonna show you guys is Ice Gauntlet Fire Mage. So basically you take a fire staff, you do some pokes and some prods. Like I said, I don't really have these upgraded, but the staff is pretty cool. You can see the animation pretty well here. And then obviously you have the Ice Gauntlet too. And basically this is just mass AOE, mass damage proc. This one isn't used as much because it's not as powerful as the other two, but it is still pretty good as an overall. With combat being this way, you'd think exploring the world would be very fun as you'd be able to test new skills, practice combat, and get more loot. But this is very wrong. In fact, the game doesn't really reward anyone for exploring, as you may get a few items here and there, but they don't really help you in the game whatsoever. I would even say that once you hit 60, there is no point in questing unless you're trying to do in-game quests for in-game items to make it a little bit easier for you to get into in-game dungeons, making exploration one of the worst things in New World. Progression is pretty fast and easy to understand in New World, as all you really have to do is buy some base level 60 gear, run some dungeons, and do dailies to allow yourself to catch up quickly. When buying gear from the market, there's two different things you can do. You can either buy base gear that allows you to just get into some level 60 content. You should be able to do it fairly easily, but it will be a little bit of a struggle. You can also buy completely maxed out gear if you so desire as well, as long as you have the gold. I think one thing about New World is that you can buy anything off the market. Which is kind of cool, but everything's so expensive. So this is usually how I do my filters. I do 590 minimum. Then I usually search by price. You can go up or down. Doesn't really matter whatever you're looking for. But everything that you need is expensive, right? So if I want the best item in the game, I have to completely get to gold cap, then buy the best item in the game, which is good. It makes everything very exclusive. Um, it, it's just really interesting because it feels like there's almost no point in dungeons at that point. You could honestly just be a farmer and just buy everything. Buy your gear, buy your weapons, buy your armor, buy your rings, your earring, whatever it is. You could buy off the market very, very easily if you just grind out life skills instead. And then you don't have to worry about ever doing anything besides life skilling. 
Dungeons in this game are very easy to understand. Most of the time, it's as simple as avoiding a circle and an obvious attack. Other times, you may need to look up how to do a fight for a main boss or ask a group. The biggest issue with dungeons is the community as they are extremely toxic to the point where 99% of the players will get mad if you don't know how to do the dungeon 100% perfect on your first try. But there is that 1% that will help you understand and enjoy them. Finally, we have the dailies, probably the most simplistic part of the progression as you just have to log in and play the game. There are many different ways to do dailies from doing dungeons and chest runs to simply doing PvP and gathering, allowing anyone to progress throughout the game no matter their play style. Thus, Thus making the game very easy to log into every day as all you need to do is to play for about one to two hours in order to progress. All right, we're going to kill for some PvP. I haven't played in like a hot minute, so keep that in mind. I'm terrible. Let's go, oh, boys. We got in. That's what I'm talking about, baby. Hurry up. Open it up. Oh. Bro, oh, my God. I'm spamming the wrong ability. <laughs> What am I stuck on? Well, we got fucking rolled. So, good times. But we got our daily done, boys. Let's go! Even though there are many wrong things in the game, there's still some things that I really enjoy, such as the immersiveness. Honestly, the game feels very immersive. It feels like I can play the game for hours and hours a day. The combat is it does go in with the immersiveness, but it just feels so good to keep doing over and over again. And it honestly is probably one of the only reasons I played as long as I did. The life skills. Honestly, the life skills are pretty fun. Like I enjoy cutting the trees. I enjoy mining the rocks. I think all of it's very satisfying. You can just throw on some music, chill and have a good time. And the dungeons. As long as you don't get toxic people, in your dungeons the dungeons can be a lot of fun the biggest thing is finding people that aren't toxic and finding people that know what they're doing or are willing to learn if you can find those people then dungeons are so much fun and honestly i will play them over and over and over again obviously this game has a lot of things that are bad in it as well honestly i think the leveling is extremely tedious like yes it is very fast paced and it is very quick to level up but that doesn't mean that it's not tedious running back and forth always and then you only can level up through basically doing quests is just horrible Horrible. the community like honestly it's just really toxic there's a few people here and there that are cool but for the most part it's just people screaming at each other in dungeons or screaming at each other in pvp and that's about it the pvp there is a lot of desync going on a lot of people know it too if you have better internet than somebody the chances are you will probably win the fight period i don't really know how they could fix it but at the same time it does need to be fixed and finally there's not enough content like if we're just gonna be honest there's not enough content in this game if you really grind it out new world like every single day for two months straight 12 hours a day you could catch up have maxed out gear and you'd be big chilling so they need way way more content to grind for whether it's achievements skins whatever it is they need it at the end of the day, New World is neither a good or a bad game, as I feel at the end of the day, everything that is good in the game, there is something that is equally as bad. Honestly, as of current day, it feels as if I'm playing a beta the entire time instead of a fully released game, and I believe this is the biggest thing that's holding New World back. So after playing the game for about 300 hours, I would say the game is fairly fun to play, and you can play this all day with your friends very easily. It does not have a lot of replayability, because once you hit a certain point, you are basically just done with the game until next expansion comes out which means there's no replayability the graphics are really good honestly for what the game is the graphics do come together really well and probably maybe play the game for a little bit longer than i was supposed to the community is absolutely terrible they're toxic as hell there's about one percent of the player base who's actually cool and those one percent usually stick in their own groups because they know the game is toxic the game doesn't really have good accessibility they honestly don't give a shit about their new players it is fun for a new player to come into the game but that is about the extent of the accessibility Hill Wars 2 is a high fantasy MMO set in a steampunk medieval environment where the player slays dragons, gods, and the, all their companions while adventuring the world. In today's video, I'll be rating this game based on how fun it is, how much replayability it has, how well the game looks, how easy the game is to get into for new players, and how friendly the community is. When first loading up the game, you're met with a small cutscene that gives you some lore on the game, followed up by the server select screen where you can choose any server that you like, unlike other games that we've played in the past, as usually these servers are cross-play with each other as long as you're in the same region.
As a MMO, Guild Wars 2 has a fairly good character creation as there are multiple different races to choose from that have unique features, story, and lore, making most people want to create multiple different characters so they can get each and every individual's lore so that way they can really build on it, especially if they ever decide to release Guild Wars 3. We're playing human. I can't bring myself to play anything else, at least not right now. I think we're going to start out playing Warrior. I, I think that's what we're going to do. I think we're going to start out playing the Warrior. I think that's going to be our best choice here is Ebony, Ebony, Purple. There we go. I think this looks pretty good. I think this is a, a good boy here. Has to up the opportunity to perform in the circus. I never covered my sister's body. I've never searched for my true parents. These are all pretty stupid. I'm just not gonna lie. Big explosion. I would say that the biggest issue with character creation is that some race customization features are locked behind expansions, making it where you may not be able to get your preferred hairstyle, tattoo, facial feature, or something of that sort without buying a certain expansion or DLC, which is a little interesting. I think that's something that they might need to update on a little bit. At least make it where there is some more hairstyles or something of the sort that would allow the players to have a little bit more customization. Leveling in this game is extremely fun, as everything in the game feels extremely important, from small events to main quests to even completing full maps. Not only do these feel important, but they also give the player a sense of accomplishment, as they give XP, loot, skins, achievements, to make you really want to explore every single area, so that way you can gather every single thing. But I can, uh, I can't tell what color it is. Uh, yes, the ferns of the turret skin... Uh, sometimes they lose the colors of the key card. Your key is blue. Do we need... Okay, do we we need to like, activate this? Okay, we have to activate that, I see. So we can kill this. Okay. That guy's dead. Kill this guy. Is this guy a boss? He's dead too. I don't really know how I feel about the gun. Big poison. There we go. Come on. Why is he invulnerable? Why is he invulnerable? I'm so confused how this works. With that being said, the exploration is amazing because they perfectly teach you how to use skills and items at perfect timings in your adventure, although they also make it where you can go on your own in the exploration and learn things completely on your own, making exploration one of the best parts in the entire game. That's right. That's right. Glidey McGee out here. Here we go. Oh, yeah. Look at that, boys. What, what does this vendor have? I, I don't remember what he has. Let's see. Oh, wait, this guy sold, sells the Exalted Keys for the event. Let's buy a few of these. I, I don't have a... Wait. Yeah, let's let's buy a few of these. I don't have a lot of them. So, we'll buy like... I don't know. Let's let's buy like 50, probably? Yeah, we'll buy like 50 of these. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Oh, get it. Get it. Go. Jump. Jump. Ah. Ah. All right. Go, 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 go. Let's go. Let's go. We got it. Almost there. Oh. Oh, oh, we got it. We got it. No, no. Where was I supposed to go from there? What do you mean? Oh. Grab. Upsy daisy. Go, 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 go. Grab. There we go. There we go. There we go. We did it. Oh, boys, we got it. Let's go. Yo. Big damage. Nope. Nope. Sw swap bars. Swap bars. Big damage. Big damage. Big whammy. Nice. Rising. Big, big damage. Holy Death shit. Let's go. Hey, get the archers. Get the archers. They're going to one-tap us. There we go. Yeah, yeah, got an archer. Get this guy. Uh, uh. Man, I suck. Yes. You can't stop me. Like I said, like I said. Death stalks me. Nobody Boss is dead. Let's go, boys. Yeah. Combat is kind of weird in the game. In the beginning, it's one of the worst systems I've ever seen in a game, as lots of the buttons and skills feel like they're across the universe from one another. Most of your skills don't even combo with each other, making you even 10 times weaker than you should be. And I feel like if you don't change your controls, the game is extremely clunky to start out with, but it does get better. Boom. Rolled and smoked. So much damage. Oh, let go up. We're going to get this guy too. He's dead. Look how much damage we're doing. Oh my god. Boom, 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 boom. Alright, yep. He got rolled. Alright, get this guy too. Free XP. Free XP. Oh. No, I only shot once. Loot. Uh, he gave me loot. We did it. Alright, this guy's dead too. 
Ah, I get rolled. In-game combat is 10 times better, though, because by this time, you have most of your skills that work well together to make you do more damage, and you've probably changed your controls to your liking or have gotten used to the base controls by this point, making in-game combat pretty fun, especially once you get into more in-game content where you actually have to dodge and use your skills together and really do combos. Oh, my ass. Jesus, man. Oh, there's a vet. Give me your vet. Veteran. Get my circle. This is him too? Okay. This guy's basically just a mini boss. These guys hit hard. Ow, man. Let's use some more fire on this guy. Big rage. We got him. Let's go, boys. I'm out of here. Oh, boing. Me. There isn't much to say about progression because it's extremely easy. Once you hit max level, you can buy the second best gear in the game off the player market or from an NPC vendor for karma. Then you can immediately start doing dungeons, raids, fractals, events, or whatever you like really at the end of the game because of how fast it is. You can truly catch up to most players within 100 hours after playing the game. Okay, Big damage. You can't stop me! Ooh. You can't break this magic. You get like you get a lot of stuff for free. Okay, I see. There, that shot. Okay. Now. Heal. Pop, pop, pop. Nice. Just right, spin to it. Getting started. Oh man. It hurts. Hold on. I pull through. This can't be happening. I need some help. Yeah, we have a lot of people just standing inside the fire. It Almost looks like. Uh, Got that. Get out of that. Oh, you killed it. This begs the question, though. Then what is there to do? Well, most players in this game focus on doing quests or getting achievements, skins, and extra gear. Then when they're done with all that, then they'll either make a new character or they'll quit the game until the next big update comes out, which is kind of sad to say. I wish there was a little bit more progression in this game, whether it's through I need to grind more gear out or something of that sort, because in reality, you're just trying to get a extra 5% or extra gold or extra skins once you are fully in the game. There's a lot of good things in Guild Wars 2. Honestly, I believe the character creation is pretty good. For a MMO, I think it is pretty solid. Obviously, it's not as good as like a game like Black Desert Online, but it is way better than Trove, and I think that it gives just enough to where the character will be satisfied with what they are doing throughout the game. The leveling is one of the best parts in the entire game. It's extremely fun, extremely easy, and all you have to do is really run around and do whatever you want to really level up. The exploration is one of the best parts in the entire game, as it it goes along side by side with leveling and combat and honestly it makes it where you can level up you can get skins you can get achievements whatever it is you can get it from exploring the map which i think is such a great way to do it that they reward you so well by basically doing nothing this game honestly has some of the best skins that i've ever seen it has a lot of really really nice skins that you can put together in any way shape or form to really make a character the exact way that you want it with all the dies and everything it just makes it 10 times better i know that we see similar things like this in like world of warcraft and i'm very happy that it's in a game like this this game has one of the best communities I have ever seen. Almost every single person is willing to help and almost every single person is willing to teach. It's actually crazy how many people are willing to sit down and teach you how to do an event or how to do a raid or how to do a fractal. Whatever it is, people are willing to do it. Sure, you do run into a few bad people here and there. It does happen. It happens in every single game, right? But in this game in particular, it feels like almost everyone likes each other this game has a absolutely amazing story if you actually sit down and pay attention to the dialogue and you pay attention to all of the cutscenes, it has one of the best stories that i've ever seen throughout a mmo and there are a few other mmos that have really really good stories don't get me wrong but this one is definitely up there on the list Obviously, if there's good things about the game, there will always be bad things as well. Nothing is perfect. One of these things is events. I'm not a huge fan of in-game events. Honestly, having to coordinate with like 50 to 60 other people that you have no clue who they are. You don't have them in Discord or anything is a little weird to me. Maybe it's just me. I know a lot of the Guild Wars 2 community is really nice, but it is kind of weird. I do have a problem with chat. Honestly, they need better filters on chat. 
because I am playing at max filters and people are still saying racist slurs in chat and still getting away with it because they just like space it properly. I'm not a huge fan of the base controls. They seem to be very clunky and you have to almost guarantee change them unless you're a very, very long term player who's been playing with them forever. But I feel like any new person coming into the game is going to hate the controls. And finally for the cons is the progression. I really despise the progression in this game. I think it's cool you level up fast. I think it's cool that you can get gear fast and get back to end game faster. But at the same time, it feels like after that, what do you do besides do the story or get achievements? And if you're not a story hunter or an achievement hunter, then you probably won't really like this game at the end of the day. Because yes, there is PvP and stuff, but you're only doing PvP to either make gold, get skins, or get achievements if you've already completed everything else and you already are maxed out on gear. Guild Wars 2 is overall an extremely fun game to play as it pulls you very deep into the content, makes you want to play for hours and hours on end. I don't really think the game is very replayable though as it's fun for the first time, but I couldn't see myself really wanting to replay the story or replay any of the missions. They're pretty fun for the first time, especially learning the lore, but after that, I think the game would kind of be boring. The game looks really good if you're playing on high graphics or even ultra graphics and you can even mod it to make it look better through the use of shaders or just higher quality textures in general, which make the game pretty fun to play if you are really into aesthetics. The accessibility is amazing in this game as you can change all of your controls and all your graphics to be completely custom so that way you can play the game in your way and for as long as you want to instead of how long other people want to, which I think is probably one of the best parts about the game. Finally, the community is one of the best I've seen in my 18 years of gaming. There are a few people that are bad here and there, obviously, but everyone it has been extremely helpful, at least for me. Wayfinder is a MMORPG that's gone through a lot of controversy since its unofficial launch in August of 2023. From what we know, this game has been in development for at least three years, but since its unofficial launch, this game has completely destroyed itself and its potential. This was due to a mixture of lack of content, the devs not being able to keep up with the players. Even I fell into a deep trap of pre-ordering the $150 version of the game to get exclusive items to be very, very let down. To my surprise, though, the devs are still trying really hard to make the game work by bringing new changes to the game, changes such as fixing bugged quests, adding more content, but most importantly, changing how players interact with the game. So you can no longer have 6 million items in one inventory alone, causing the game to crash. Wayfinder is out now on PC and PS5, so in this video, you'll get to see my first looks of the game, a list of goods, and a list of bads at the end of the video. One of the first traps that the game fell into was on release. It was essentially impossible to play as you had to wait in almost a four to five hour long queue. And while in this queue, it was almost impossible to do anything because if you crashed whatsoever, then you would have to wait in another four to five hour long queue. With these queue issues and with these crashing issues, it immediately tanked most of their players base from roughly 50,000 players to immediately 20,000 players in almost the first three days. Fine, boys. Holy shit. We're already further along today than we got all yesterday, so I cannot be mad whatsoever. Attack Dragon Cliffs. All right. That boy there. This boy here. That boy there. That boy there. Dude, Ooh. cool. I play Clash of Kings, kind of similar. I have no clue what Clash of Kings is about. Oh, I'm in the game, but I'm also in the middle of a Clash of Clans match. Um, this got <laughs> really bad real quick. <laughs> oh no. After making it out of the queue, you're able to go into a tutorial where you can test three different types of characters and you're going to choose one that you want to start with in the game. First one you can test is Wingrave, a paladin character wielding a sword and shield with protective skills. The second one is Silo, a gunslinger-like character wielding explosives and a rifle with high AoE damage. Lastly is Nis, an assassin with quick movement wielding dual daggers with high single target DPS skills. I personally chose Wingrave though as I primarily like to play warrior or tank in most games that I play. The combat in the game changes completely depending on the character you choose and the weapons you use for the character. My personal experience with one grave he is insanely slow compared to other characters but is also much tankier than other characters as well allowing you to face tank a lot of the shots although it does seem that they made dodging the same speed on all characters oh 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 my god we're down we'll get you up buddy get up no dying. Get out of that. We gotta destroy the little guys. Okay, go, 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 go. He's weak, he's weak. That's it, boys. We did it! 
One of my favorite things about combat though is the ability to switch out to almost any weapon on any character. This makes it where you can have a lot of unique builds through the use of crafting weapons and buying weapons off the market. While playing through the game though, you quickly realize how barren most of the areas are in the game. So what they've done is add beautiful background textures to make the world look fuller than it really is. But when you explore areas, they have little to no content besides the occasional world event or mini boss that doesn't even really give anything. Forcing the game to feel insanely empty outside of the player hub or your dungeon. Back for being a MMO, I played the game solo 90% of the time as it's easier to do dungeons solo. The only time I played with anyone was at the beginning when I was either playing with my friends or towards the end when I wanted to play with my Twitch chat. You. Um. Yo, what up? You came to die. I'm gonna clear my 80 trees real quick. <laughs> yeah, that's like the goal of the year, right? You gotta get on, clear your 80 trees, maybe throw down some upgrades, and then you can like log out for the rest of the year. Cover stolen supplies. Let's get this guy. Nice, we got him. I really like the stuns. I'm trying to use these, uh, I'm trying to use rolls as much as possible because getting used to ro rolling early game, I feel like it's going to be really big. Big damage, big damage, boys. All right. Get over here, help this guy out. Kill this guy. Oh, I, like, stopped moving. <laughs> I, I was too focused on, like, swinging my sword. <laughs> That first one was pretty hard. I don't know if they scale like off of how many people you have or what, but like it was fairly difficult for a starting event. Some like swamp dragon things down here. Some guys to fight. leading to one of my biggest gripes in the game being the questing or the lack thereof as most of the quests in the game lead to absolutely nothing or give absolutely nothing or just don't exist whatsoever in fact the only purpose in doing quests is to unlock new zones and boss fights so eventually you can unlock the dungeon or boss fight you need in order to grind up the gear for your build in fact the only time i was really excited to do a quest was when i got a quest that would lead me to a certain boss that was the only boss in the entire game that i couldn't beat and i ever died to what up baby i'm here to play Oh, oh, dude, move. You won't get through me. Let's go. I learned. I learned from every move, bro. Every fucking move. I learned everything. After playing Wayfinder for almost 69 hours, these are my pros and cons. Pros. The graphics are insanely clean and I really enjoy them. It reminds me of playing a game like Dungeon Defenders back in the day. And I'm a really big fan of those type of graphical art styles. I don't really know what that art style is called, but it is very aesthetically pleasing and doesn't really hurt my eyes after hours of playing the game. The combat as it's insanely fun and is just like a default combat that you would kind of expect out of a MMO. But at the same time, it is very flowy and very easy to understand the combat as you only have a few skills and those skills are always set towards that certain character that you are playing the dungeons as they're very interesting in the game some of them have some puzzles to do some of them have just hard bosses to fight and i think the dungeons is probably the best part about the entire game character designs as in games like this you really have to make sure that each and every character is very good in their own way i think that's what wayfinder does insanely well is each character you can tell is meant for a purpose and they fulfill that purpose very very well i believe the overall concept of the game is insanely enjoyable not only is it basically fantasy warframe but the fact of going into dungeons and clearing out like this darkness from the world just makes you constantly feel like a hero making it overall very enjoyable to play these characters and understand the story more in depth
cons. The world is insanely empty and feels like it has nothing in it. There's so much that you can see, but there's so little that you can do in the world. When you're exploring, yes, there might be a few bosses. You can fight maybe a few world events, but those world events don't give you anything or do anything for the player. I would actually recommend to the devs that they add something like skins or something like that that you can get from these beginner boss fights. So that way it makes the world feel less empty. And something that makes the world feel insanely empty as well is the lack of players that the game is already down to. After only five months of release, the game is only averaging 250 players per day, which is absolutely horrendous for a MMO. And it's getting to such a bad point that honestly, if I was them, I would consider shutting down the servers. Questing is one of the worst things in the entire game as there's not a lot of quests in the game, but the quests that you do have to take will lead you to higher end dungeons and higher end boss fights. So that way you can continue to grind gear. And I believe that is one of the worst ways to have questing in a game where the only purpose behind it is because you have to do it in order to get a excess piece of gear it makes sure the quests aren't really fun to do and they're just insanely tedious because you have to do that one quest so you can get to that one dungeon so you can get that one piece of gear for your build gear grinding is absolutely terrible for the current state in the game one of the big things with gear grinding is you have to sit down and grind for hours and hours and hours on end and there's so many other things you can get inside of the loot pool that it's almost impossible for you to get certain pieces of gear unless you're a either insanely lucky or b you just spend so much time grinding it that obviously you're going to get the piece of gear with how bad the gear grinding is in the game i'd prefer to go play a game like world of warcraft where at least if i'm not getting the gear then i can at least understand it a little bit i believe this is a prime example of a game being released before its time as it seems as if the devs took an extra year of development and did a open beta for testing the game wouldn't be sitting at 300 player peak after only five months of being released now i know many people are thinking well the game isn't technically released because it's an early action access therefore it isn't released but i believe using the term early access is just an excuse for poor development decisions overall i'd say the game was really fun and had insane potential but at the end of the day after everything that has happened i don't believe that there's any way that this game can be revived from what it currently is even if they fully release the game lose your fucking words was a one-on-one release in late 2008 and it was the first mmo that i ever played and is the big reason that i am addicted to mmos today if you don't know what wizard 101 is it's a mmo where the player crafts a witcher wizard based on seven different elements explores the world through the use of weird monetization methods, builds a house with tons of different skins and customizations, and while leveling up and collecting more powerful spells, you'll be able to fight back evil mages and beasts at the same time. In this video, I'm going to talk about my experiences with the game and what I believe the devs could do to make the game overall more popular. The character creation and tutorial set up the game perfectly for the player. After starting the game, it quickly guides you to a short quiz where you'll make various choices based on your personality that'll help you choose which of the seven elements you want your character to be based around. Although the game will not lock you into a character choice, it will allow you to change it while still in character creation personally i always get lightning ironic i know after making your character you're launched into a short tutorial that teaches the player a lot obviously it teaches the basics like walking and talking but it throws you straight into combat with the main villain allowing the player to get a hint into the lore without getting super deep into the game when introduced in this way the game also allows you to get a taste of end game spells while learning combat at the same time i absolutely love this introduction as it feels like you're already a massive part of the game allowing players to get immersed very quickly exploration and questing takes up 90 percent of the entire game making it the main aspect in the game. After completing the tutorial, you'll be thrown in the streets of Wizard City, where the player can begin discovering magic shops, pets, new spells, and items to use on their journey. This is also where most of the player base spends their time flexing skins they bought or found. When first coming to this zone, though, players immediately are thrown into doing quests throughout the various zones of Wizard City. Oh, so this is the trick that runs the fairies? Bro, wait, wait, wait. She's kind of bad, no? Wait, so if if she doesn't have an age on here, does that mean she's as old as the game? Most of these quests are fairly simple as they usually consist of going to a zone to destroy a few enemies and return the quest. Then this eventually leads to the player to fight a boss and collect some items until the zone is complete. Making the game get boring very quickly as each zone is designed with unique enemies and art styles but is the same zone and world repeated within different skins. On top of this, almost all new zones or worlds require the player to pay in order to continue the story. But we'll talk about that part a little more later. While exploring, you'll be able to fight multiple different types of enemies in each zone, allowing for constant unique experiences as you level up because creatures get harder spells. Spells. Jack, the Pumpkin King. The Pumpkin King tried to bust all over me! His snake's all over me! I feel violated. 
One of my favorite parts about combat is how well it's designed as they made it where you can decide when you want to fight and exactly what type of enemies you want to fight. By not only putting different enemies in different areas, but making it where players can only fight a maximum of one target per player in a duel unless they're fighting unique enemies and bosses, all while allowing other players to join your duels and help you complete them or make them harder. I personally found this fairly enjoyable besides a few times where players would hop into my duel and make it harder when I was trying to get something done. On top of this, as I leveled up, I was able to obtain new spells, allowing me to have more unique attacks, buffs, and debuffs for combat. Although I can never seem to find better gear for myself, I definitely say though one of the best parts about exploration is the voice acting as it seems every little NPC is voice acted in some way. Ah, the spell is working. Look, Gamma. Finally, we have found one. Now, some were definitely better than others, but overall, it made the game 10 times more enjoyable to play as you experience most of the voice acting. As you progress through the beginning areas of the game, you're also introduced to pets housing at mounts. Pets are fairly good most of the time. They start as a baby version of itself. Then over time, the player can raise it through different foods and battles, allowing the pet to become very strong and help the player in a battle and in some quests. There really isn't anything bad to say about pets besides maybe the best ones come from the shop. Housing is insanely good as there's a multitude of houses you can acquire in game that have tons of decorations, materials, to allow the player to design it in the way that they like. Finally, I believe the mounts are kind of lacking as there are a lot of cool ones, but 90% of them come from the shop and a lot of them only last a certain amount of time. So if you buy one, make sure you check if it's only for a limited time or you might end up wasting your own money. If the wiki is correct, then there's 20 different worlds with various zones that all vary at different prices. And when added together, it costs about 180,000 crowns or 450 USD when not on sale, making this one of the scummiest monetization methods in any game I've ever played. In fact, I prefer a complete pay to win game than one where you can become soft locked after only an hour and half of playing on the other side of this you can buy a monthly membership for ten dollars usd monthly or sixty dollars for a yearly membership all this being said it truly sucks because this game's potential is unreal as, as the game is insanely unique in its play style but has terrible monetization methods so what would i do to improve the game first i make all zones that are part of the main quest free to play and give anyone who bought the zones 10k free crowns as long as they could prove that they bought it through in-game screenshots or receipts then i'd add more options to character customization for free such as new name choices hairstyles and face shapes after this i'd revamp the graphics ever so slightly as they don't need to be on par with Tarkov, but something around the original Dungeon Defenders would be amazing. Overall, Wizard 101 is an amazing concept for a game, but the game is severely lacking when it comes to gameplay. As almost every feature in the game is very well designed for the time period it was released, but clearly hasn't gotten much love over the years as it has been developed. One of my favorite aspects of the game, though, is the combat formula and the undying loyalty of the fans. I truly believe if the devs started to do quality of life updates, not only would they make more money, but the game would become much more popular. As someone who played this as their first MMO, I'm slightly disappointed in the game's development. With all that being said, with the current state of the game, I have to rate this game a 4.2 out of 10 and probably won't be playing it in the future unless something major changes. Star Citizen. One of the best MMORPGs that I have ever played. Star Citizen is a sci-fi MMORPG that many consider to be a space sim, where the players can buy ships, explore planets, fight pirates, steal loot, and truly play the way they desire. The game itself has been in development for 14 years and spent well over $644 million while doing so, but it is on a completely different level than any other game in the same genre. In this video, I'll be talking about my experiences with the game and what I believe makes this game great. Choosing a ship for Star Citizen is one of the main aspects in the game, but can be a little tricky as well. Well, as there's tons of ships to choose from that all do different things, some ships transport, fight, smuggle, and salvage, but there are ones that'll do all those things combined. You can even buy ships purely meant to fly around, have ship meets, and take screenshots. These ships can also vary in price anywhere from $30 to $3,000, usually shifting the price based on uniqueness and size, with many more to be added as Star Citizen continues to update. When first starting the game though, you'll have to choose a starting package with a ship. I personally recommend the one with the Cutter or the Mustang Alpha, as both these ships can fight and run some cargo, making both of them able to do a variety of missions, although your starting ship doesn't matter, as they set up the game perfectly where the player can do as they desire, even if you start with nothing but a fighter, you can easily rent a separate ship for a different task, or do missions with the first ship until you can afford a new one. So far, all usable ships can be bought in-game through an in-game currency called Yook. I'd even say the main objective of the game right now is to gain millions of Yook and buy as many ships as possible. I don't believe there's anything wrong with the ships as they've made counterparts to almost every type. For example, Drake ships tend to be heavy fighters and cargo runners that usually look to be made from a steel-like substance as if they're designed for war. In fact, the Drake series has one of the most expensive ships being added to the game, sitting at a $2,000 price tag. That is a legit aircraft carrier, but for space. But on the other end, we have Origin series ships meant for pure luxury. In general, these ships are very smooth and painted bright white, with their interiors having beds, shelves, and lights. One of these ships is called the 890 Jump, sitting at a $950 price tag. 
and is literally just a space yacht. Ships and their designs are insanely good in this game, although one gripe I do have is they'll copy and paste the same ship for variants. Sometimes the variant isn't different at all or is worse. Star Citizen has many game loops that help the player earn yuck. Dude, I just got Thanos snapped out of my ship. Like, what is going on? Firstly, we have burst learning missions, usually taking the player to a point in space or a planet where the player will be tasked to eliminate enemies and protect an area. These also allow the player to learn how to shoot and get tons of free loot they'll be able to use in the future. Although a massive issue with these missions is the NPCs are terrible. Most of the time, they'll do nothing and just bot walk in circles, then randomly snap to the player's head, kind of ruining your time if you're playing these missions a lot. Next up, we have bounties, where the player is either tasked to hunt down a player or an NPC. As the player progresses through bounties, they're able to take on harder missions, allowing them to make millions of yuk in a short period of time. Bounties are insanely fun as you're always interacting with the world in a very fast-paced way, although one thing I dislike about bounties is sometimes your target will just ram your ship, making you either become lost in the void of space or instantly blow up and just lose the mission. Oh, oh, goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> what a series of events, dude. <laughs> lay down, lay down, lay down. Boys, I'm not going to jail. I'm, I'm telling you that right now. I'm not going to jail. No, Austin, did you just fall out? No, I'm leaving. I'm not going to jail. When progressing further into the game, you're going to be able to also do salvaging. Salvaging is a task where the players hunt down destroyed ships and essentially mine them for their resources through the use of a special ship and a mining laser. Salvaging is currently the freest money in the game, allowing the players to make millions off of basically doing nothing, but is insanely boring as it takes hours to salvage properly. Honestly, there's nothing wrong with salvaging, and if you have the mental fortitude to do it, then it's great for money. Cargo running has tons of things to do and is one of the most difficult things in the entire game. With cargo running, the player usually has to deliver medical supplies, resources, eggs, and maize from one location to another. When delivering basic supplies and resources, usually they're not worth enough for anyone to bother you unless you're delivering a massive shipload, making it fairly easy. But if you want to make much more yuck, you must deliver weevil eggs and maize. Weevil eggs can be found primarily in ship crashes throughout planets, and maize you can either pick up from black market vendors or special events. A lot of people know this event as Jumptown. Jumptown is a location on the planet Yella that produces maize over time. Every once in a while, the devs host an event there that forces the maze into mass production though, forcing the planet yellow to become a massive battlefield to almost all players in the game. Both maze and weevil eggs are worth thousands to millions of yuk depending on their current quantity, making players smuggling these goods a high target to pirates. Cargo running is one of the most fun things in the game as there's a variety of things that will happen. You will not only move cargo, but you'll also get into a lot of combat and explore almost all of the planets at a constant rate making it insanely fun to do cargo running. Pirating has become a slight plague on the game. As the games progress, there are so many things that require the player to cargo run, from mercenary work to salvaging to just delivering goods, making pirates a big part of the game in order to steal everyone's loot. All it takes to be a pirate is the ability to either track or to sit and wait in a common pickup or delivery location, making pirating extremely easy, especially when there is a mass desync and enemies cannot fight back. In fact, a lot of players and content creators have recently started to quit the game because of how easy it is to grind for for hours and hours on end to lose everything in only five minutes due to the pirates, especially since there are very little consequences for being a pirate. For example, pirates can obtain a bounty and if caught will be sent to prison for a long period of time, but it's insanely easy to never be caught as NPCs aren't usually good enough to capture players and pirates can easily combat log in the right situation. With that being said, pirating is overall insanely fun for being a pirate as you're basically just standing around and waiting for free loot. Although it is terrible for the current state of the game, as it's forcing more and more players to quit the game or become pirates, lowering the amount of players doing other gameplay loops. I believe if they want to fix this, being a pirate should be more punishing, and they should really strive to fix the desync issues. Outside of these game loops, there is other things to do in the game, but these are the primary ones that everybody is taking advantage of at this current point in time. Two things that I really enjoy outside of these is racing and mining as well. Mining is just super relaxed. It's literally exactly what it sounds like. You find a location, you mine some rocks, you make some money off of it, and racing is exactly what it sounds like. You're basically just racing different sized ships, making both of those really enjoyable, but they're not something that everybody in the game is really striving to do at this current point in time. If there's already all of this in the game, then what is there to look forward to in the future? Well, for starters, every single year they add tons of ships and new skins that players can 
purchase. On top of this, there's talk of base building coming to the game as well, which is going to allow players to build on planets and have spawn locations that they will be able to mine resources from at the same time. There even is some talk that these bases are going to be able to get raided by other people, which is a pretty interesting concept. One thing that I saw when it originally released is I thought it might be something like Ark Survival Evolved, and that is a little concerning, but if they do it properly, it could be insanely fun. They're also working to add server meshing and AI updates as well in order to make servers more fluent and NPCs not so robotic in their gameplay. On top of all this, there's also talks of Squadron 42, the story mode of Star Citizen releasing at the end of the year. One thing I definitely think everybody should take note of when paying attention to this game is that it is still an alpha and has a lot of potential to still come. Overall, Star Citizen is an amazing game. I know many people say this game is a scam or they spent too much money, but people don't realize game development costs and time for one of a kind unique games, such as games like Red Dead Redemption 2 that spent three to five hundred million dollars in development over the course of eight years to become a once in a lifetime playthrough. I absolutely love Star Citizen's gameplay and graphics, although the game will definitely be 10 times better once AI and desync are fixed. Truly though, for a minimum of $40 to play and not needing a super PC, it's definitely worth it, as the likelihood of playing another game game like this is very slim at least for another 15 years with all that being said i rate the game a 7.81 out of 10 thank you guys so much for watching today i hope you enjoyed if you did don't forget to like subscribe and have a wonderful day